It's the year of the rabbit, and if you're thinking about getting one, we've got everything you need to know, next on All for Animals. They're cute, they're furry, and more than 200 of them end up at Animal Care and Control of New York every year. It's mostly, according to Executive Director Julie Bank, because folks purchase these rabbits at a pet store without thinking it through. They come from different places, and in most cases, people are getting them as a pet without really thinking about what it means to have a bunny as a pet, and then finding out afterwards that it was either more work than they can handle, or they really weren't prepared for the responsibility that they thought at the time, and then they end up turning them into the animal shelter. The other thing that we see is people abandoning bunnies, because people think a domestic bunny is the same thing as a wild bunny. So while wild bunnies can live okay in the street, in the parks, in the community, a domestic bunny cannot. So we often have people who find them in the street, or our animal control officers find them and realize this is a domestic bunny that can't survive out there, and bring them back into the shelter. In 2004, Animal Care and Control partnered with Rabbit Rescue and Rehab, a participating organization in the Mayor's Alliance for New York City's Animals New Hope program to help facilitate rabbit adoption at the city shelters. All for Animals sat down with Rabbit Rescue and Rehab Cindy Stutz to get the scoop on basic bunny care. The mainstay of their diet is uh, hay, grass hays, uh, like timothy, brome, orchard grass. Uh, they're like little horses. Uh, and then also the second part of their diet should be leafy greens, dark leafy greens. And that could be kale, cilantro, uh, parsley, romaine lettuce, anything but iceberg lettuce. Okay, and why is that? Because iceberg lettuce, just like for humans, there's not much nutritional value in it. We line the litter boxes with paper. You can use newspaper, just a regular bogus type of paper. And then we uh, just fill it with hay. So they know the difference between the hay that they eat and the hay that they do their business on? Yes, you have to give them big litter boxes so that the rabbit can, you know, use it as a toilet or sit there and eat hay. And a lot of times, a lot of rabbits love just laying in their litter boxes. Whatever you do use, whether it's a cage or a puppy pen, it should be at least three times the length of the rabbit and two times the height. And so that's per rabbit? Can you per put, rabbit, can yes. Can you put more than one rabbit in, in a habitat? Uh, you can, uh, a bonded pair, but rabbits should also get out at least two to three hours a day of free-range exercise. Rabbit Rescue and Rehab stresses the importance of covering all electrical wires in your home, whether or not your rabbit is being supervised, to prevent not only injury to your pet, but also a potential fire hazard. A rabbit can live 10 to 12 years, which is uh, longer than a lot of large breeds of dogs. So when you get a rabbit, hopefully uh, adopt a rabbit, uh, you will uh, realize that that kind of commitment is involved. And what kind of uh, medical care do they need on a regular basis? Well, we recommend that a healthy adult rabbit be seen a vet once a year, and uh, they should go to a, a veterinarian who s specifically sees rabbits. Do rabbits have shots like cats and dogs every year, vaccination? No, they don't require any kind of vaccinations. But they should be spayed and neutered or they'll be mating like rabbits. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. They should be spayed and neutered uh, because especially like males will spray like cats do, um, and that helps stop that. Uh, also, they're much easier to litter box train when they've been spayed and neutered. Cindy warns against bringing a rabbit into a home with young children who might agitate the animal, and notes that, as with all pets, adults must be prepared to serve as the primary caregiver. In addition, while cats and rabbits are generally compatible, dogs are most often not, and therefore dog owners must have your pet's behavior assessed before introducing a bunny into the home. Our bunny room is filled at the Manhattan shelter with bunnies that are available for adoption. They're different colors, different sizes, but again, we want you to really do your research and to think about what's involved with 
having a bunny in your home. And before you even come in the door, make sure that you've done all that research to determine if it's the right pet for you. If it is the right pet for you, please come to an animal shelter rather than purchasing a bunny at a pet store because these are animals that are definitely in need and are definitely looking for new families that are going to love them. And what best is to have a family that really knows what they're doing and rescue an animal in need. It's, it's really a great situation. So when you adopt a bunny from ACC, there's an application process. Tell me about that. Yes, you do go through an application process and you do work with one of our bunny volunteers to ensure that you are going to be the right home for this bunny and that this bunny is going to be the right one for your family. There is a small adoption fee with the bunny and the bunnies all do come spayed or neutered so you don't have to worry about any type of bunny problems after that. If you're thinking about getting a rabbit, please make yours the next great rescue story and check out the adoptable bunnies at nycacc.org. I'm Susan Richard. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time on All for Animals. <laughs> you're so cute. <laughs> you are. You're awesome. Looking at me like you are just weird. This guy is Webster, and he's a year old, and he is available for adoption. Hi, Webster. Toto. Toto.